I'm Dr. Chris Appamacki from Angstrom Engineering and welcome to another Angstrom How-To. Today we'll be discussing a common thin film deposition parameter known as tooling factor. I'll do this in two parts. First I'll describe theoretically what tooling factor is and how it relates to system geometry, different materials, deposition rate, and crystal lifetime. Second, I'll provide a practical demonstration on how to determine tooling factor on this specific tool, which is one of our next step PVD platforms. Let's begin with our theoretical description of tooling factor. Simply put, tooling factor is the relative thickness of the film deposited on the substrate versus the film thickness deposited on the crystal being used for measurement. For example, a 50% tooling factor describes a system in which the film thickness at the substrate is half that of the crystal. Tooling factor is a simple parameter that accounts for an array of complex system parameters in thin film deposition. For this reason, we must remember that tooling factor is only valid in the exact conditions under which it was measured. So in this discussion, we'll limit ourselves to a specific class of thin film deposition techniques called physical vapor deposition. This includes thermal evaporation, e-beam evaporation, and sputtering, for example. In these processes, material evolves from a source in a vacuum environment where thin film growth generally proceeds in the absence of chemical reactions. This process of material evolution depends heavily on the type of material. For example, in thermal evaporation, where we melt the source material, the relationship between pressure of the evolving vapor and the temperature of the liquid is heavily dependent on material-specific thermodynamic constants. In sputtering, the deposition rate depends on the sputter yield. Sputter yield represents the ability of the discharge ions, for example argon, to sputter material from the target, which depends on several material-dependent factors. As an example, for the same discharge ion energy, the sputter yield for silver can be six times that of titanium. So now that we've established that material type affects the tooling factor, let's discuss the system geometry, which includes, for example, source to substrate distance and sensor location. When material is evaporated from a source, the amount of material evaporated per unit area has an angular dependence relative to the source. This angular dependence is described by a cosine law distribution. For more information on the derivation of the cosine law flux distribution, consult the text Material Science of Thin Films by Milton Oering. Given this cosine law distribution, and taking into account the fact that the sensor is rarely in the same location as the substrate, there will be a discrepancy between what is measured on the sensor and what is deposited on the substrate. When designing a thin film deposition tool, the sensor location is a balance between ensuring that it intercepts enough deposition flux to be accurate, but also limiting the flux as much as possible to prolong the sensor life. To account for this, the tooling factor is introduced so users can enter a target thickness and the deposition software will adjust accordingly. To calculate tooling factor, we first must perform a deposition with the target thickness and an estimated tooling factor. This estimated factor is an educated guess based on experience or perhaps an in-depth knowledge of the geometry of your chamber. Once the deposition is complete, we simply measure the thickness of the film and plug the values into this formula. On the left-hand side, we have TF sub M, which is the measured tooling factor, which is the one that we're interested in. TF sub I is our estimated tooling factor. T sub M is our measured film thickness and T sub I is our estimated film thickness. So as we discussed, we need to make a guess at a tooling factor. For our case, I'm going to guess at 75%. Okay, so we're ready to begin our practical demonstration. We're going to be depositing an aluminum film on a glass slide, but before we begin, we're going to discuss sample preparation. To measure the thickness of our film, we're going to use a stylus profilometer. To do this, we have to create an area on the substrate where no film is deposited. There are several ways to do this. I will describe two. The first method is to use an etch resist pen, like this one from MG Chemicals. We'll simply draw a line down the center of the substrate. After the film is deposited, if we dip the sample in a solvent such as methanol, the etch resist will be dissolved and the aluminum deposited on top of it will be lifted off, leaving the bare substrate. The second method is to simply use some capped on tape and tape off an area on the substrate. After the deposition is complete, 
The tape is carefully removed, exposing the substrate beneath. So here we are back at the tool. I've secured the samples on the stage and loaded the stage in the tool. We're ready to pump the chamber down. So our chamber is pumped down and we are now ready to begin our deposition. I've set up a sputter deposition process in which we'll deposit 200 nanometers of aluminum. We're at the profilometer, where first I'm going to show you how to expose the substrate in both of our samples. For the Kapton tape sample, we simply remove the tape to expose the substrate. When using the etch resist method, we suggest that you place a strip of Kapton tape over the area in which you applied the etch resist. This will allow you to remove the aluminum that was deposited on top of the etch resist. Now that we've exposed the etch resist, it's time to apply the solvent. As you can see, the solvent is now washing away the etch resist. Now I have loaded a sample onto the profilometer stage and we are ready to measure our thickness. So based on our profilometer measurements, we've deposited a film of 120 nanometers. Our original tooling factor was set at 75%. This means our initial guess was slightly off. No problem, that's why we're performing this process. Plugging in our target thickness, estimated tooling factor, and measured thickness into our formula, we get a new tooling factor of 45%. We can now enter this new tooling factor in our deposition software and proceed with our depositions. In this video, we've discussed and demonstrated the concept of tooling factor as it relates to physical deposition processes. We hope you've enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you have any comments or questions, please comment below or give us a call. We're always here to help. I'm Dr. Chris Hapamaki. Happy depositing.